give to further the mission of our church and reach souls. You can drop off your tithe in an offering box, give online, or drop off a tithe to the church office any day of the week. Once again, thank you for joining us. Worship will begin momentarily. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Baptist Church again. We'd like to thank you for coming here today. We're so excited for what the Lord is going to do. But if you stand with us, we're going to start by worshiping the Lord and just asking him to reign in our lives. Continue to lift up the name of Jesus, and we just thank him that he is a miracle worker and a peacemaker, and that he is all that he says he is, and so let's continue to worship him. Oh, 
and Father God, we thank you for this day that that is who you are. You are the way maker. You are the chain breaker. You're the promise keeper, the light of the world. And we just pray that God, that, that today, that God, that you would show up and do the work that needs to be done in the hearts and lives of God's people. That God, that truly we will leave this place living in personal revival. And Father, if there are those among us that have never said yes to Jesus, they don't have that wonderful promise of heaven as their home and knowing you in a personal way that you are their way maker. I pray that today would be the glorious day when they say yes to Jesus. Father, meet with us today. Lord, would you do the work that needs to be done in the hearts and lives that are in this room, that are listening online. And God, will be sure to praise you and thank you. For it's in your precious son's name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. You may be seated. It's good to see you here today. We welcome you to grace. If you're visiting with us, first time, first time in a long time. Uh, listening online for the first time, first time in a long time. Man, it's, it's great to have you with us in, in worship. And we would like to connect with you um, just so that you can know a little bit more about us and if there's anything that we can do to be a blessing to you and help you in your spiritual journey. We want to be able to do that, but I flunked my class in Mind Reading 101. And, uh, but if you'll connect with us, we can do that. Uh, if you're digital and tech savvy, you can just text the word grace to the, the number on the bulletin, the number on the screen. Uh, or uh, if you're here present, there are some hard cards, I think, throughout the chairs, and you can fill one of those out and drop it in the offering boxes. But we're delighted to have you with us today, and we welcome you to Grace Baptist Church. I want to welcome you also to Spiritual Emphasis Month, and hopefully many of you were here last Sunday as we pick up uh, where we left off, living in love with Jesus. Uh, Dr. Ken Gilman did a wonderful job, and today we're looking forward to, to talking about what God's Word says about living in personal revival. You know, we're praying for, for our nation to see revival. Maybe you've been praying for our church to see revival. That ain't going to happen if you don't see revival. That's where it begins. And so Spiritual Emphasis Month, you say, what's it all about? It is a month of Sundays that we have set apart that God may bring us to that place, that it would be a, a spiritual awakening. We're calling it movement. Why? Because we want God, we want to see God move among his people. How many of you understand this? If you've been saved more than three weeks, you'll get this. That as believers, we're bent towards drifting away from the Lord. So what do you got to do to drift away from the Lord? Pretty much nothing. If you're not where you need to be, as we mentioned last week, by the way, C.S. Lewis quote, if you're not where you need to be, know this, God loves you right where you are. Aren't you thankful for that? But he loves you too much to leave you there. If you're not where you need to be with God, pastor loves you today, you're not at a good place, and you're definitely not at a godly place where you can experience the power of God in your life, where you can experience the presence of God. You ever wonder, how come so-and-so is experiencing God in their life? Are you where you need to be with God? That's all you've got to worry about. And I don't know about you, but I, for one, I am so thankful we got a God in heaven that loves us and radically goes to extreme measures to call us back to himself. And spiritual emphasis, we're asking God to move among his people, to awaken his people, and to call us back to himself. What's that look like? It begins with you. That's the only way we can get there is for every one of us. That's what Billy Sunday said when it comes to revival. Draw a circle and get in it and find out, am I where I need to be with God? And if you're not, God still loves you. But are you willing to pray this prayer? This is a, this is a big, bold, audacious prayer. Are you, are you willing to pray this prayer? Young man, young lady, dad, are you willing to pray this prayer? Lord, if I'm not where I need to be with you, I'm asking you to lead me there at all costs. Oh, the mystery of the sovereignty and the omnipotence of an almighty God that he calls to us, but then he allows us to respond. He says, today is the day. Today, right now, is the accepted time. You know what God's going to do for some of you today? He's going to present you with another opportunity. 
to draw back to himself, to repent. You know what the word repent? I know it's an old-fashioned word, but it is a Bible word. And you know what the word repent means? It means this, a change of direction. Instead of going your way, going God's way. That you might experience his power and his glory and the goodness of God. Proverbs 28, 13, you've heard me quote it many times. He who covers his sin will not prosper. So, Pastor, that's your opinion. No, that's God's word. He that covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes, God's going to show up and you'll experience the mercy of God, you're going to experience the glory of God, you're going to experience the goodness of God. So as you've heard me say on many occasions, you're going to leave here today as close to God as you want to be. May God help us to respond. James chapter 4. God resists the proud. So in other words, if we want to see God show up and work in you, you got to get rid of your stinking pride. We all battle it. God resists the proud, but he gives grace. How many of you want some about grace? He gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit yourself to God. And I love this. He says, if you will draw near to God, what will he do? Ah, oh, praise the Lord. Amen. God's right where you left him. And he's waiting on you. Henry Blackaby, many of you know Henry Blackaby that wrote the book Experiencing God. He said this. Revival awaits the holiness of God's people. Could it be when it comes to revival, God's waiting on you? Let me give you a little instruction, then we'll introduce our speaker. Um, When it comes to the spiritual emphasis month, and we've got today, we've got next week, and we've got the 22nd, I want to encourage you to be faithful. Uh, Today... Um, we have three separate messages, 9, 30, 11 o'clock, 6 p.m. All of these messages uh, build on one another. Um, So be faithful. And I want to encourage you to be engaged. I left my little booklet down there. If you didn't pick up a booklet last week, I think there's still some out there. Pick up one of those little booklets. And you may not be an avid note taker. That's okay. But there's there's some pages there that if God speaks to you during this during this time, during the during the sermon, there's something that, that God just that God uses Brother Tom or God uses his word. Would you write that down? And may it bring transformation to your life. Uh, we in the announcements talked about the prayer room. Uh, feel free to visit the prayer room before services, after services, if God's dealing with you during the service. Let God have his way. Now, many of you probably, you should have anyway, um, got one of these little cards that looked like this when you came in. Did anybody not get one of these? We'll have somebody bring you one. You did not get one of these. They come with a $5 bill. Anybody get one? Um, This card is just simple. We want to keep it simple. We want to keep it true. We want to keep it biblical. It's, It's what's it look like for you and me to respond to God. And there's a card at the bottom. We'll give you a little bit more instruction later. Uh, Maybe Brother Tom will talk about that. But I I want to encourage you, um, when it comes to these messages, utilizing this card, and I think it's perforated there. It is perforated so that you can do some scribbling down on this back. But I want to encourage you to listen to God. By the way, that's the way you ought to come to church. You remember what we talked about last week in the book of Revelation, all those churches? What's the last thing that the, that the Lord Jesus says to every one of those churches after he gives them instruction what they need? To, they need to return to your first love. You need to repent. And then he says this, he that has an ear. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. So I want you to be here today, not just physically and in person, but I want you to have your spiritual ears on and listening to what Lord's doing. And then here's something else. It's going to cause you to get out of your comfort zone a little bit, but we're talking about living in personal revival. One of the, one of the great revivals, the Welsh Revival with Robert uh, Owens, Robert Evans, Evan Roberts, that's it. I'm, I've read Ed, I've all these guys I've been reading this week. Um, but one of the, there's four things there. Well, one of the things is for you to experience revival is, yes, listening to the Holy Spirit. But here's the second thing. You ready? Obey the Spirit promptly. How many of us have sat in a service like this, 
come under conviction of the Holy Spirit and we grieve or quench him. Because we say, yes, I need to tend to that, but not right now. What will everybody else think? Oh, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Obey the Spirit promptly and be willing to confess Christ publicly. Our guest today is, is nobody new here at Grace. Um, my friend and your friend, Brother Tom Wagner, and his wife, Terry, is with him. And we're thankful for that. She keeps him in line. But Tom is a dear friend to me, and uh, here's what I know about Tom Wagner. He loves the church. He loves this church. And a uh, couple things. Number one, he has a heart for God. Uh, he still is co-pastor. They've not run him off yet at uh, Central Baptist in Dunn, North Carolina. Very small town, smaller than Winchester. They're not close to a city like Lexington, out in the middle of nowhere. And God has used Tom and Terry, and God's done it through them. Uh, just a great church, well over a 1,000 attenders that worship there every week. And uh, Tom... Uh, has a heart for revival. Um, he is transitioning into full-time evangelism. He does lots of meetings every year. Um, but here's what I know that is unique about Tom. I don't know of anybody in my life that has a heart for calling the church to repentance. By the way, you know this is where revival starts in here. Quit blaming it on Washington. Quit it. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, if they'll tend to some business, if they'll humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear, then I will heal. Peter says it this way. Let judgment begin and what? No, let judgment begin where, church? At the house of God. And God has burdened this man to call the church to repentance that we may experience personal revival. You welcome our guest, Brother Tom Wagner. Thank you very much, Pastor. Good heavens, where are we going to put uh, the rest of them that comes in in the next hour? Uh, hold your card up. Would you hold it up just for a minute? Shake it in the devil's face real quick just because these cards are going to tick him off today. I just want to go ahead and tell you that. We're going to do something very creative with the bottom part of it later on. We're going to destroy it in a very unique way tonight. Um, they tell me the evening services are a little more casual, a little more fun. We're going to do something really unusual. So bring these. Keep them with you all day long, please. Uh, keep them in your Bible. Young people, I'm glad to see you guys down front. I can see God's been working in your heart this summer. I was, I'm glad of that. There are a bunch of rebellious ones in the bunch, some mean ones in the crowd. I know some of you, but I'm so glad guys. No, they, they've been very kind to me, and I thank God for these students. I will tell you that um, the message today is one of the most unusual ones as you turn to the book of Hosea, chapter 1, that I've ever preached. This is a message born in my heart the same way God spoke to Hosea. I have a little cottage at a little recreational lake in North Carolina called White Lake. Here, nobody in this room, I'm sure, have ever heard of White Lake. Isn't that a cool original name? White Lake. I don't know why they called it that. Don't ask me no questions after the service on it. But I'll tell you that um, Terry had gone to bed. I don't know if any grandkids were down there with us or not. But I felt as compelled to go out on the porch as I've ever felt. And I started praying and listening for God, and I wasn't even thinking about grace. I'll be honest with you, and I love this church. It's one of my all-time favorite places in the world to come. I got friends here, and, and I, just, I love this place. But the Lord had something to say to me. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I, I want to be sensitive to him. Sometimes I can't tell uh, if he's talking to me directly first or he's got something to say to a church I'm going to be standing in. But this night was just for me, and I sat there. Uh, into the wee hours, the crack of 11 probably. Uh, that's late for me now. <clears throat> no, it was later than that. I'm sitting out there. Terry had gone to bed. She's real spiritual. She uh, wasn't up praying with me or anything while that. She'd gone on to bed. And I, I just had a pencil and a piece of paper. And I've actually got the original little pieces of note paper with what the Lord's given me to say this morning in the first hour, in the second hour, in the third hour. And I'm going to tell you, he's right I didn't plan this for grace, so, and he didn't ask me to try to plan to encourage you to be here for all three sessions. Here's what I've been a part of at Grace all these years. Bible conference, remember? With either Bob or that Cajun, what was his name that came that time? 
Mike, yeah, Mike, yeah, and we had fun with him. Clark Bozier, I mean, it's been, it's been I've, I don't know how I've kept getting to be able to become, but it's been Bible conference. But today's different, and I'm going to say some things that are hard to hear, and yet I'm going to say them what God said to me personally, what I'm dealing with, and I'm going to challenge you with them. And I believe if there's no other church that I'll preach this in, I'm as convinced as I'm, my name is Tom Wagner, and I'm his servant, that this morning, both hours and tonight, is for this congregation. And, and beyond that, let's look at the big picture, for this city and for the ministry. So let's pray. Father, I'm so aware that I'm nothing and you're everything. I don't have it, but you do. I can't do it, but you can. And God, I've said always, I've said all these years that this church is poised to experience a Holy Ghost move. And you could do with what you've done with that church I was in not long ago and in one year so move in the church as to double the attendance. You've positioned them out here on this roadside. And I looked at the, the construction and the beauty of the front now. And then, Lord, I think about this building that you've given them. What I know you didn't give it to them for just uh, a few sprinkling. I think you have something big for us. And so, God, may we trust you with it. Speak through your servant this morning. Lord, keep my guard on my mouth. I don't want to say one thing that you don't want me to say, and I don't want to regret not saying something that you have to say. So speak through your servant like a conduit today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hosea chapter 1, it's not the passage I'm preaching out of, but I just want to set this up. You know the story, and yet every time I read it, something new God was saying to me. Notice verse 1, chapter 1, the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. He was a prophet in Israel for about 60 years under all of these kings. And then I want you to notice verse 2, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said, two times he said, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. And then he said, God said these words to Hosea. I want to ask you something. Do you believe God still speaks to you today? Now look here, if you don't believe that, we're wasting our time. If God only spoke directly to the prophets, if he only spoke directly to Israel, where in heaven's name are we? But if it's true that God still speaks to his church, and we know that he does, I want us to listen to what he has to say to his church today. Hosea must have thought, God, what? do you have to say to me? I was trying to imagine those times like that night sitting out on that porch when God comes near. I have the privilege of having that little gift of the prophet where God speaks to me and, and he does it through his word and how he gives me words for different people and congregations. And in those moments, I know how sweet it is to be in the presence of God. But on this moment, I feel that Hosea felt something different from God. It was not just that moment that he gets to be with God and be in his presence and it'd be glorious. Oh, no. He feels the heaviness of the heart of God. You say, Pastor Tom, how do you know that? I know that because of what he tells him to do. He said in verse 2, Go, take thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. All of Israel has departed from God. They've abandoned him. They have betrayed him. They've been unfaithful to him in this moment. And he says, I want somebody to be able to feel what I feel. I, be I believe I can trust you, Hosea, that you will be able to, to share with the, the nation of Israel because you're going to feel it when you marry a woman and you love her and you wake up and she's gone. In the middle of the night, maybe on the night when they consummated their marriage, She's gone because that's the only life she's known. She likes what she receives as a re result of her sin and her abandon. And so we see him taking her. And the Bible says, and he took a, a daughter, verse 3, and he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. If you underline your Bibles, notice that. Most believe this is the only child born to Hosea of uh, Gomer. She bare him a son. And then the Bible says, and they call his name Jezreel. The name here is the, the name scatter. God's saying, I'm going to scatter my people. And by the way, pastor, this is what happens to churches. If churches like this don't get right with God, if we don't get right, hey, let me make it real practical to you. I'm going through this in my family right now. If a family doesn't get right with God, 
Divorce happens. Scattering happens. Our children go to hell. That's what happens. They go to the world. If God doesn't move and if we don't draw near to him and we continue in our adultery, our spiritual adultery, a scattering of our life begins to happen. Call him Jezreel. And he comes down, notice verse 6, and she conceived uh, again and bare, bare a daughter, not him a daughter, bare a daughter. Most believe this is from her unfaithfulness and her whoredoms. And God said unto him, call her name lo Ruhamah, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. No mercy is what her name means. God's saying, not only will I scatter them, I'm not going to have mercy on them either. And then the Bible says, look down a little bit further. Verse uh, 8. Now when she had weaned Lohu Rama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, call his name Lo Ami, for ye are not my people. And then something amazing happens. And this is in the nature of our God. And I want to say something to Grace. I'm going to say it in this hour. I'm going to say it again in the next hour. I like your name. I like that we're called Grace. Because in the next hour, it almost shifts gears in the next verse. God has just said, I'm not going to have mercy on you. I'm going to scatter you, and you're not my people. And then how in heaven's name? Boy, all of the commentators, and by the way, a commentator is just a commentator. That's all they are. I want you to know that. But I read after some of them, and none of them have any answer as to what happens next. Look at verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel, this is God talking, shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. In the middle of telling them I'm going to scatter you, you're not going to see mercy, and you're not my people, God said, but there's hope. And you know where the hope is? In the grace of God. I'm glad the name of this church is Grace because I want to tell you it doesn't matter where you are. If you just wandered a little bit away and you're cold and dry or if you've ended up down a road that you're embarrassed by, you dare wouldn't want anybody in this church to know it. Either way, I want to tell you this morning, God has come near and He's coming during this month to draw you back near to Him all because He loves you. The same way Hosea loved Gomer and the same way God loves Israel and in the same way, in that same way, Jesus loves you this morning. Well, I could read more, but I want to go to my text. You ready? That was just our introduction. <laughs> Come over to Hosea chapter 10. You say, preacher, what, was thing, what were things like in this moment? Well, I'll tell you that it appeared to be really good times. They were prosperous materially. There was all kind of materialism. Pleasure abounds National security is at a height. There is no captivity. They've experienced that. There's no threat. They even look religious. The whole group look kind of religious. But if you look a little deeper, listen to this. Look a little deeper. And notice the hearts of the people. They're empty. Their religion was shallow and, and it was showy. You know how dangerous, it is to, how dangerous it is to have a band of musicians as good as you've got? I said something to the preacher about it this morning. I was waiting for one of them to mess up. I think some of y'all need to hit a wrong note every now and then. I, I'm telling you, I've I'm, I'm been coming to this church. <laughs> I started to say something really funny, but I'm not going to say it. I don't want to grieve the spirit because I don't want to bring back memories of the first time I ever walked in this church and the music. It wasn't like it is now. <sighs> But I'll tell you the danger. Are you listening to me? The danger is performance. And going through the motions. See, Israel was doing that. If you're honest, there have been times when you have. And I promise you, of every person that's on this praise team or is a musician or works in the sound in the back, there's, a, there's not a Sunday where one of them, at least, is not struggling in their flesh. I, when I look at this, I see the nation of Israel, God's people, they had turned to be unfaithful to God. And you know the way the Lord saw it? He saw it kind of serious. He saw it as a wife being unfaithful, as a whore, living in whoredoms and harlotry against her husband. Well, in chapter 10, two little verses. I want to give you my truth for this morning. And then we'll, in the next hour, we'll build upon this. First, this morning, I want to just talk about fallow ground. Everybody here has heard about it. Got a few farmers in the room. 
But I want to look at two little verses that I never saw in this light before and live three little thoughts and then we'll be completed this first hour. Look at verse 11. And Ephraim, and every time you read the name Ephraim here in Hosea, he's talking about Israel. And Ephraim is as a heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn. But I passed over her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Judah shall plow. And Jacob shall break up his clods. Now look at this. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. That's my verse for our living in personal revival. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time. They say in the original it reads high time. To seek the Lord Till he come, there's my favorite verses in the text, and rain righteousness upon you. God has some fixed laws. You don't change them. I can't change them. One of those laws is sowing and reaping. You'll never reap unless you sow, right? Here's a a little bit more on that sowing and reaping thing. I've been studying it lately. You'll always reap more than you sow. You put a few little kernels in the ground, there'll be a stalk. We're going to have a little corn today. I understand. I saw it over at the, at the pastor's home. Uh, there'll be a little corn served to the man of God this afternoon. I'm quite excited about it. Listen to me. You put that, those kernels in the ground. A stalk comes up. Three to four ears on that stalk. And every one of them's got several hundred kernels on it. So it's a great big multitude of harvest on top of that. So you always, you can never reap till you sow. You always reap more than you sow. Hey, listen to this one. You'll reap in a different season than you sow. Pastor, you remember those times we ever gone through in the church and it gets a little dry and there's not a harvest? We're not seeing as many people saved. You know what happened? You go back a few months and years. There'll be a season when we did not sow. But if we're perpetually sowing, we can be perpetually reaping. If we're sowing ourselves in righteousness, we can reign righteousness. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. I want you to notice... Uh, that little statement, till he come and reign righteousness. Can I just remind you this morning, listen to me, God's not a God sitting in heaven that's withholding anything from you or me. He wants to pour it out. He wants you to experience every blessing you could imagine. He wants you to have a little glory in your life. He wants you to have the best marriage you've ever had. God wants you to experience his goodness. But listen, he wants to come. But he can't rain on fallow ground. He can't bring a harvest on fallow ground. Now let me tell you what fallow ground is real quick. Some of you know it well, but I want to remind you. Ground that has at one time been productive. There may have been a harvest. Some of you may have had a harvest time. In your life there was a harvest. Look back to that. And something happened. Maybe the ground, and when you look at ground and it becomes fallow, is when it's neglected. There's been no plowing of it, no watering of it. It becomes hard. You know what my buddy over in, he's still in the state of Kentucky in Maysville says? Uh, Kevin Bell says there's something, some of y'all have these, called a river. It's a big old pointed blade thing that, that tears down into the soil and breaks it up. That's me today. I've come to rip you. Uh, and God, God wants to, to break up the fallow ground. Listen to this. And, and we, we, if to help us to be sensitive to him and to experience fruit. When land becomes, by the way, becomes uh, undisturbed, it becomes fallow ground. Did you notice the preacher? He just, he getting, oh, he's, wanting to, he's wanting to preach so bad. He, it's been a few weeks. Everybody else see that too? It's down in him. He wants to so bad. And he's thinking to himself, I've got a guest speaker. I need to hush. And then he had to say one more thing, just one more thing. Bless his heart. He will get to preach before long, but not today, my brother. Not today. Let me, let me tell you about fallow ground. <clears throat> I want you to examine your heart. You know how fallow ground began, becomes fallow ground? You just leave it. <clears throat> just leave it alone. You don't cultivate it. You don't meet with God. You go through a little motion of reading two scriptures and heading out the door and praying on your way to work. Lord, bless me today now and take care of everybody. Amen. You just, you just, you just come to church and go through the motions and nothing changes. Your worship is not what it ought to be. And, and so you just leave it. Leave your church alone. Or you come when it, you know, well, I'll come when it's convenient, preacher. I, now, I'll show up for an hour here. Now, but don't ask me to stay no more because I can't do that. Now, I've got to get home. I've got them beans to fix. We've got to have, the youngins are coming. Or, you know, I'm, I, I can't come Sunday night. I would. I really want to, but 60 minutes is on. And I have to watch uh, 60 minutes. So I get my, my fix there. 
Just leave it alone. Hey, by the way, leave your marriage alone. As a pastor of a large church over all these years, it's been so sad to watch fallow ground be developed in a marriage of 30 and 40 and 50 years sometimes. Just grows over hard. God's not involved in it. You let your heart alone. You know, look at, look at verse 11. I never saw this. This is one of the things I, and the Lord turned the light on me in the, on the porch that night. Ephraim is as a heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn. You know what will happen if you put an old ox out in the field or any animal to plow? They'll get used to it, a routine. And they'll just keep their head right down and keep on plowing every day. They'll get used to it to the point where it's a routine for them. And they'll just keep on going all the time. And the Lord said, when I look at Israel, sometimes I see that. They're just, it's a routine. They don't love me. They don't love the harvest. They don't love my son. They're just doing it. They're just going to church because it's Sunday. And by the way, I'm glad you came. But wouldn't it be great if you bounded out of bed on Sunday morning and said, Hallelujah, it's the Lord's day today. We're going to go meet God and it's going to be a little glory in the church. I can't wait to see my brothers and sisters. I can't wait to feel the breeze of the Holy Ghost blowing in the church. By the way, this is what happens when the ground gets hard and it's hard ground. A routine and a ritual of singing songs and coming to church and going to Sunday school and being in the life groups. And yet God says, I want more than your head hanging down and you walking through the, through the pasture. I want more of you. I saved you. I sent my son to go to the cross for you. I love you. Did you know when somebody ever tells me and they mean it, I mean somebody that knows me, says, I love you, Tom. I want them to see in my eyes what that means to me. I want them to hear coming back out of my mouth, yes, you do. And I love you too. Do you hear me? That's what God wants. God wants more. He wants us to follow him and love to follow. Are y'all watching this chosen? You've probably already seen it. Right, anybody help? Raise your hand if you're seeing some of it. Raise your hand. I, I, if you haven't, you need to look this thing up. I've just figured out how to cast it from my phone. I feel like I'm a technical wizard now. Put it from my phone up onto that smart TV. I'm in about, Terry, are we at episode five of the second season? <clears throat> it's, it's helping me love Jesus more. As I watch the disciples follow me, they're a mess. Every one of them are worse. They're worse a uh, mess than me, some of them. Now, let me hurry. Time's getting away. 10.14. What time is supposed to be done? 10.30? Or when I get ready to? Well, amen to that. We, listen, let me tell you about fallow ground. We all go through this, don't we? Where we neglect. We have hard days. Some of y'all have been through crisis. Hey, we've all been through a mess in the last little while. And yet God says three things in this text. I want you to see it. So to yourselves. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. Then he said, it's time. It's high time. Look here. We don't need to wait anymore. You say, why is it so important? Because those little children around here listening and watching. I got six grandchildren. You know what I want them to know? I want them to know that their granddaddy knows how to get a hold of God. I want them to know that granddaddy loves Jesus Christ. When you talk about Jesus, granddaddy's eyes water because he's longing to see him. And one day when they hear that granddaddy's gone to heaven, they'll be, they'll be grieving, but they'll be rejoicing because granddaddy's with his best friend. That's what I want for us. That's what Jesus wants. Hey, that's what Hosea wanted from his wife, Gomer. It's time. By the way, you don't get right when you want to. Did you know that? You get right. You get right when it's time. You know what happened a few months back? The Holy Ghost came to this pastor and these leaders. And the Lord said, it's time. There are churches all over this country that aren't calling the people together. There's so much fear. But there's a spiritual need deeper and greater than the physical fear that drew us to these moments. And it's time. The Holy Spirit is saying to you right now, it's time. It's time to interrupt my weekday, my Sunday schedule. It's time. Three things. Number one, I want to tell you, first of all, it's going to be a personal decision of examination. Number one, a personal decision. Number one, he said, so, verse 12, to yourselves. Do you see that? I can't do it for y'all. You can't do it for me. I can't do it for the deacons. I can't do it for Pat. You've got to sow to yourself 
in righteousness. Well, how in the world do I do that? I'm going to get to that. One thing I want you to see is the seed that's sown. You know what seed is? Word of God. That's why, look here, you think he's asking you to stay for some of these extra hours to mess your schedule up? No, he wants you to experience the sowing of the seed. So do I, so does God. Sow the seed. And the seed of the Word of God, sow to yourselves the seed of God's Word. Take it in. By the way, on this card, I forgot to say something about it. On the, on the one side that ain't got nothing on it, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm writing down the sin God's convicted me of while I'm here today. I've got two things written down already on the blank side. On the other side, by the way, we're going to destroy that bottom part so nobody ain't going to see it. Don't put your name on it. Don't show it to nobody. It's between you and God. On the other side, what I'm making a decision for God, I'm going to burn that too in a little while. Ooh, I'm slipping, tell them what I'm going to do. We're going to have a surprise, a surprise. Sow to yourselves, sow the word of God. And then he said, <clears throat> listen to this, <clears throat> sow to yourselves in righteousness. Now what, Pastor, explain that to me. Well, that word means right doing. Right doing toward God. Listen to this, not just that, but right doing toward others. It may be the Spirit of God speaking to somebody this morning about something that you need to make right. Remember that story, Pastor, you told me last night about our friend Johnny Hunt and how in the airport he spoke sharply to a young man. He sat down and the Holy Ghost said, you were wrong, go over and make that right with him. He had to go apologize to him. Look here, I don't know who you've hurt or your mouth has offended, but you need to go make that right. Today's a good day, it's high time. So to yourselves in righteousness. Hey, if you said something to your kids, young people, if you've treated your mom and dad in a way you shouldn't have, today's the day to repent of that. Ask them to forgive you. Hey, some of you would never speak to me or to any of us the way you do your mom and dad. I don't know why that is. I talk, my mother's 92. She gets on my nerves sometimes even now, and I have spoken to her in a way that I've had to repent of before God and her. It's hard. Caregiving is hard. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about sowing to yourself in righteousness. Number one, it's a personal decision. Number two, it's a, I'm almost finished. It's a painful decision. Break it up. Break it up. It ain't easy. Look here, it takes a real man to get right with God. You think you're a big shot. You think you're strong. You think you're spiritual. I'll tell you what it'll take. It'll take you breaking up and putting that ripper down in your soul and opening it up and getting honest with God. Rend your hearts and not your garments. God said, I, I've seen enough of the show. I want to know you, your heart. Speak, God. Break it up. We're so busy, aren't we? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pastor still for a little while longer. And in addition to that, I, I, Terry and I travel and we love it. This is what we're called to do, calling churches to repentance. We got activities. We got grandkids. They're playing ball. We got sports and clubs and activities. In my town, of nearly 10,000 in that town. <laughs> I was in a church the other day. I said, you know, I think there's more people in the bathroom here at this church than we have in downtown in Dunn, North Carolina right now. But I'm going to tell you something about them. <clears throat> Here's what I know. I can be involved in, I preach funerals this week, people that I haven't seen in a long time. I could get so busy if I'm not careful. It's a painful decision. I must cultivate and break up my fallow ground. That get, rocks get in my ground. Rocks get in your ground. Get a little hard knock here and there. Thorns get in my ground. I get thorny at times. Weeds. And none of that brings forth that glorifies God. Are you listening to me? Repent. Number three, not only is it a personal decision and a painful decision, but finally, <clears throat> look at the text. It is a persistent decision. <clears throat> hey, we're, we're enjoying a good day of revival. And by the way, I'll tell you tonight what I know about John A. Vant. You're in for a treat. Ken was a blessing last week. I watched some of that sermon. Listen to me. It's a persistent decision. We don't have a little measure of revival. I believe it today. But if you think that's the only time you're ever going to have a need, for the record, I've said this to you before as a church, but I'm going to tell you again now. You're a mess. Every one of you are a mess. Your church is a mess. I'm a mess too. Everybody born on this earth is a mess. And we get right with God, and then we mess up. That's why I used Israel and Ephraim. That's why I said, uh, Hosea, go marry a, a woman. 
who will break your heart because we fail And then we repent and God forgives. And it doesn't give us a license to sin. It simply reminds us that we're old sheep. And we fail. So it's a persistent decision. Listen to this. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it's time to seek the Lord. Here it is. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. You just keep on doing it. Don't give up. Remember the importune friend in the Bible that just kept knocking on the door saying, I need bread, I need bread. Somebody's coming to my house to eat. Just keep on, keep on. The blessing comes. If you'll keep on breaking up the fallow ground and you'll keep on seeking the Lord and and then what's going to happen is he's going to come. You say, what does that look like? I don't know what it looks like here. I've seen it happen. I was in a camp not long ago and I watched about 800 kids get right with God and repent of their sin. I saw the glory roll in. I've been in some churches where we've had to extend the meeting and there's a harvest afterwards and people getting saved all over the place. I, I know all kinds of things can happen. I'm simply saying to you, when God shows up, till he come, might change your marriage. Might change relationships in your home and family. Your influence students when you go back to school. I don't have time to tell you that story. I might tell it in the next hour. Lord, I need to close. So let me give you my final thoughts. I love this. Verse 12, so in righteousness. Look at what the last part of the verse says. God said, when I come, I'm going to rain righteousness on you. You know that sowing and reaping principle I talked about when the beginning? If you'll sow the right thing, you'll reap the right thing. Hey, we're cotton farmers in eastern North Carolina. If you sow soybeans, you ain't going to reap cotton. You know what righteousness would look like this morning? A bunch of people acknowledging that we're sinners, like the preacher said. Writing down some things on the blank side of that card. Lord, you're speaking to me about, I intend to turn from them because you're holy and I'm not. And I want to be near you. God, revive me. Did you see it? Oh, I, I see it. He said, sow righteousness and I'll rain righteousness on you. If you don't sow it this morning, he won't rain it on you. You have to do your part. I have to do my part. You say, well, how come you tell us you're repenting? Because I have to all the time. You know why? I'm a mess. You know, I hung out with a bunch of mean independent Baptists for a long part of my ministry. (laughs) And none of them would ever admit they were a mess, Pat. Do you remember some of them? Some of them were in trouble morally. Because they tried to live to some level... That was not realistic. I tell you what I know about myself. I am a depraved sinner that is saved by the grace of God. And it's an everyday, it's an every, I start to say battle. It's an everyday running into the secret place. Getting under the shadow of the Almighty for me. If I'm ever going to be able to be used of God. Wouldn't it be great this week? I wonder how many of us it would take to get real honest before God. And say, Lord, put that ripper down through my soul. Break up my fallow ground. Some of these pretty girls, I see them. I worry for y'all. I do. I worry for you. Because since you're attractive, the wrong kind of boy is going to come after you. I want you to know that. You're going to be a little bit uh, intrigued because you can't believe he's trying to talk to you. It'll be that jock or that kid that's got all that money and is driving the finest car. Now, I'm just telling you what's going to happen. And if you ain't careful, you'll do something real dumb. You won't sow righteousness. You'll end up making a poor decision. And it'll fracture the balance of your life. God will forgive you. But it'll mar your future. And and there are people in this room that can testify. That's fact. So I wonder what repentance will look like for you today. I know what it's going to look like for me. I want to be honest. I'm listening. I'm listening to every worship song. I'm listening to what the Word of God has to say. He started tearing my ground up that night under that porch light stay with us if you can what's more important than meeting God Vance Habner said I'll close with this when his daddy would start a fire you said I don't know what to write down he said I, he, did, he said my daddy never started a fire with a big old log he started with little sticks shaved off the side fat lighter I remember what fat lighter is he started with them little sticks. Once the fire got to blazing, then he put a log in a little bit bigger. What's God saying? Let me tell you what we're going to do on this invitation. 
<clears throat> Pastor, can I do anything I feel led to do on this invitation? Then I just want to have music, no singing, just music playing. And here's what I want to ask you to do. If you feel led to come to the altar, God spoke to you about it, I encourage you to. However, you can take that card in your hand, right? This card's going to be important to us today. And write what God's saying to you, the sins, the decisions you're making to break up your fallow ground. It may take a little while, more than a day. But I wonder. You said, preacher, I kind of feel like I need to be alone. Then slip down into the fellowship hall. There are two areas down there. One with tables and one with little circular areas where you can meet God. Just you. And talk to Him. I don't know what God's saying to you. I just want us to break up our fallow ground in this first hour so we can hear the next level of what Jesus has to say in the next. Father, I've tried my best to listen to you. Lord, I've tried to do business myself so you don't see me the way Hosea saw Gomer and the way, Lord, that you saw Israel. Lord, I love this church. I thank you for them, how you've raised them up right out here on this roadside and all the dreams you have for them. And it all starts with personal revival. Would you please, God, do your work now in this quiet moment in our lives both in the seats in the fellowship hall in the private place of repentance and prayer and here in these altars may thy will be done in Jesus name just obey the Lord pastor you come when you're ready to close up the fallow ground of your heart. What does that look like? Do you remember what Jesus said about John the Baptist? There was not a preacher like John the Baptist. Rough looking character. Come from the country. Camel's hair and ate locusts. This is what Jesus said of John the Baptist. Of those that are that are born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist. Now, that's not me. That's Jesus. What he had to say about John the Baptist. And if you could summarize the message of John, what was it? Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Church, it is high time. We are living in the last of the last days. Nobody in this room, you don't know how much time you have left. You don't know how long till the trumpet blows. But today is the day to let God break up the fallow ground. How's that happen? How's that look? Drawing that circle. Getting in it asking God to forgive you and I'm so thankful we don't have to leave here thinking boy I hope he heard me boy I hope he forgave me no the Bible says that if we come to him and we run to him and we break up that fallow ground and ask God to forgive us he is faithful and he is just to forgive and not only to forgive but to cleanse what a God Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the word that we've heard. Maybe not one that we in, initially want to hear, but God, at the end of the day, when that ground is broken up 
and the word of God is received into the soil of our hearts and God, a, a, a reaping of righteousness comes. Lord, it is a glorious day. So I pray that, God, that you would do the hard work in our hearts that need to be done today. God, that you would help us to respond to, God, what you're wanting to do in our lives, in our homes, our marriages, in this church. Lord, break up the fallow ground. Lord, rain righteousness on us. God, I pray that today that revival will come to this place because we're experiencing revival personally God forgive us when we drift forgive us when we allow ugliness and sin to remain in our lives God I pray that today that you'd break our hearts for Jesus break that fellow ground and God do the work that needs to be done so we can experience the presence and the power and the goodness of God in our lives and in our church God will thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Tom, thank you for that message. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little bit of a break. We'll start the second worship hour just like we always do at 11 o'clock. But I hope that you'll hang around uh, and uh, join us for this next message from God's Word. Let's trust that God would do a work in our hearts and lives. If you're a member or a regular attender of Grace, would you raise your hand and keep it up just for a moment? We've got a few folks that are visiting with us. It's your responsibility. Get by and say thank you for coming with us today and uh, hang out, and then we'll see you back in here at 11 o'clock. You're dismissed.